like, share, and subscribe. In hip hop's 50 plus years, the conversation of the top MC has been a title claimed by many who have picked up a pen or touched a microphone. Once every decade, there are three to four names who stand as the best, and the number one from each generation is contentious. Through the 80s to the early 90s, it was Slick Rick, LL Cool J, Rock Kim, and KRS One. Through the early to late 90s, it was Nas, Biggie, Tupac, possibly Jay Z. Through the 2000s, it was Eminem, Kanye, Lil Wayne, and 50 Cent. These were names to carry their respective decades. From the casual consumer to the hardcore fan, these are the names that carry hip-hop on grassroots levels to mainstream appeal. That's not to discount names just the talented, like Andre 3000, DMX, Black Thought, Snoop Dogg, Lupe Fiasco, Ice-T, Ice Cube, the list goes on. But today we focus on three names who have carried the 2010s decade, but not all three. We focus on one of the names who has served as the bridge of the standards of traditional hip-hop while elevating the ideas of the newer generation, the middle child, J. Cole. Born Jermaine Lamar Cole on January 28, 1985 in Frankfurt, Germany, where his father was stationed in the U.S. Army, J. Cole grew up in Fayetteville, North Carolina. With a strong passion for music, Cole started rapping at the age of 12 and slowly grew as a rapper sharpening his skills. The story about Jay-Z signed J. Cole is a fascinating one. In 2007, J. Cole was a relatively unknown rapper from North Carolina, trying to make a name for himself in the hip-hop scene. J. Cole created a demo titled The Come Up and passed it to Jay-Z's people. Initially, Jay-Z's team rejected J. Cole, but he didn't give up. In 2009, J. Cole stood outside of Jay-Z's studios in New York waiting for him to arrive. When Jay-Z showed up, J. Cole handed him his new demo, the warm-up. Jay-Z was impressed by J. Cole's persistence and talent. He took the CD and listened to it, later saying he was blown away by J. Cole's lyrics. Jay-Z invited J. Cole to meet him at a studio. They talked about music, life, and goals. Jay-Z offered Cole a record deal with Rock Nation, and since then, it's been history in the making. Fast forward, J. Cole's debut album, Cold World, The Sideline Story, was a commercial success, and he went on to release critically acclaimed albums like Born Sinner, 2014's Forest Hills Drive, For Your Eyes Only. J. Cole is known for his introspective and personal lyrics, often focusing on themes of self-discovery, social commentary, and storytelling. His music often explores his experiences growing up in Fayetteville, and his relationship with the streets, and personal growth. J. Cole has been praised for his unique style of lyrical depth and genre bending, which blends hip-hop and R&B with jazz elements. He has inspired a generation of artists and remains one of the most respected figures in contemporary hip-hop. J. Cole's achieved numerous successes through his career. All of his studio albums have been certified platinum or higher, and he has had multiple number one albums on the top 200, including 2014 Forest Hills Drive, For Your Eyes Only, and K.O.D., all without features. That's what I'm talking about! His Dreamville label has signed successful artists like J.I.D., Ari Lennox, Boss, Loot, Earth Gang, Omen, and Cause. To this day, people regard Dreamville as the best rapper and label in the history of hip-hop. He has been named one of Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential People in the World, solidifying his impact not just in music but beyond the culture. These successes demonstrate J. Cole's dedication to his craft, his connections with his fans, and influence on the music industry. Like, share, and subscribe. Some people say that I'm running third. They threw the bronze at me. Behind Drake and Dot. Yeah, them niggas are superstars to me. Maybe deep down, I'm afraid of my luminosity. So on paper, J. Cole is a great rapper, heck, a top 10 MC of all time in any era. What limits him are the other two names he's competed with his entire career, that being Kendrick Lamar and Drake, two names that just seem to go places he refuses 
or simply just cannot go to. In my opinion, there is nothing on J. Cole's first two records that would make him a poignant voice on really any topic. And as far as the conscious side of J. Cole's music goes, he doesn't exactly display the, the overwhelming passion or the flow or the logic or the knowledge of a guy like Kendrick Lamar. J. Cole, to me, is the average guy turned rapper, a fan who gets to live out the highlights of a rap career very few witness, with a loving fan base and a classic album under his belt. But J. Cole, however, lives in the biggest sin of our generation, being average. Over the years, J. Cole has either been viewed as mid or corny despite his improvements. He's made as a rapper. His music and lyricism were serviceable. He's a storyteller, but he's not the best storyteller. He has hits, but he's not the biggest hit maker. He does everything right, but has never left many people saying wow. Because across J. Cole's discography, I feel like there's always been J. Cole, and then there is the reputation of J. Cole as this mega woke lyrical miracle with this laser focused intensity on whatever song topic or profound truth that he's dropping in a song when in actuality he's never truly been that at least not for longer than a song or two what can really be said at this point that i or somebody else hasn't said already about j cole supposedly woke rapper who does mainstream numbers and yet somehow falls short of his full potential with nearly every release i think one of the reasons why he's not in this big three to me is one, I just find his music pretty boring. You know, I feel like he's a regular rapper in the 90s, but he excels in radio freestyles more than his albums pull me in. Not saying he's whack, I just feel like when I'm listening to J. Cole, I'm listening to another version of things I've been listening to my whole life. Nothing wrong with that. J. Cole will always be remembered, but when you compare him to his larger-than-life peers, it becomes clear why he's slighted as three. He speaks on the plight and consciousness of black people and his personal life, but compared to Kendrick, he's surface level. He can pop off and create an album of bangers, but couldn't dream of touching a smash hit the level of Drake. J. Cole has been aware of this fact for years, and that's what led to his campaign of proving he's the best lyricist out of the three proving he's eons above Drake and a close rival to Kendrick Lamar. And personally, the offseason has become a top two J. Cole project in my opinion. And for a brief moment, J. Cole was the numero uno. But what happened? Be like, bro, that was the lamest, like, goofiest shit. And it made, I say all that to say, it made me feel like 10 years ago when I was moving incorrectly. And I pray that God aligned me back up on my purpose and on my path. You know what I mean? I pray that my nigga really didn't feel no way. And if he did, my nigga, I got my chin out. Take your best shot. I'm gonna take that shit on the chin, boy. Do what you do. Some would say him backing out of the beef between Kendrick and Drake put a wet blanket over his development, and I'm inclined to believe that. But it's only half the story. From a human standpoint, it shows his maturity, but from a masculine hip-hop standpoint, it made him seem weak. If the story is true that Schoolboy Q told him to back out of the inevitable personal war of words between Drake and Kendrick, it makes me feel like he was pitied more than revered as a rival. Then getting a couple stray bars from both parties after the apology, it really lends to my theory. This whole situation leaves me clear on who the big three are. Kendrick, out of the creator, and future. See, your big three doesn't really matter at the end of the day. I tried to bait Tyler last night into the whole, uh, you know, the big best rapper in the game, you know, the big three. They talking mm -hmm. about the Drake Kendrick Coles. He wouldn't go for it. He says Bro, the only who thing. gives a fuck? Hey, and you know what I, you know what annoys me when people are like, this is my top this is top five and people argue it like top, you got 17 year olds like yeah like dude fucking ready to die and enter the wu-tang is my top 10 album ever i'm like bro you just got hair on your dick <laughs> stop it's performing it it's like that's your and again some people might be right but i'm right. like that's you you got young boys and babies out here and that's your favorite like I don't care about people's objective top nothing. Tell me what is your favorite. Art is subjective. If you are a fan of the genre and regard it as an art form, why would you set limits on artists you love? 
It's fun to formulate these lists, and yes, at its best, rap is a competitive sport. But as it grew to become a commodity, but to the general masses, it became more about numbers and image than about talent. This modern generation of rap fans will put someone like Playboy Cardi, as good as he is, as one of the greatest rappers of all time, and not even know who Rakim is. I say this to say that why should a top 10 matter when the standard of an all-time great rapper gets lowered or changes in the eyes of the newer generation? 